Out front now, retiring Republican Congressman Ryan Costello of Pennsylvania. Congressman, thanks for coming in. Hi, Kate. You heard what the president said. Uh, well, he said a lot. But when the president today took to naming and shaming, calling out by name some of your Republican colleagues, it almost seemed like dancing on their graves as they lost election. About that, you wrote this on Twitter in part, to lose because of the president and then have him piss on you angers me to my core. What made you so mad? Yeah. Well, because, because that's why. I mean, that, that's why they lost. They are hardworking, independent-minded, center-right Republicans who woke up every single day and got angry phone calls and protests and uh, unending amounts of criticism, not because of anything they particularly did, but because they're Republicans and there is such angst and anger against the president. And if it was anger based on policy, that's one thing. But a lot of the anger emanates, rightly so, from things that he says. The, the ignorant, mean, um, uh, name-calling, snide-type stuff that you wouldn't want your 12-year-old to say, let alone the President of the United States to say. And yet, every Republican member of Congress has chosen, I think usually uh, with a degree of restraint on not calling out the president every single time he would say something that they would disagree with because they tried to focus on their jobs. But ultimately, it became an everyday occurrence where members got asked over and over and over, what do you think about Trump? What do you, what do you think about what he said about this? And all these members were running in districts where his unfavorable numbers were between 55 and 60 percent. And they had to deal with him and the fact that he was not favorable every single day. They would have won. If, his, if he was a, viewed favorably, they would have won. And so for them to deal with all that, and then the day after losing very tough races, to have the president mock them like that, I just think is outrageous. And it bothers me every single time I hear it. I'm sorry if I'm a little emotional about it. No, but I, I want to say, I mean, I've interviewed you a bunch of times, and we often talk about your position of calling out the president when you disagree with him and you know, trying to focus on other things when you can. What is it, you, you're more angry than I've seen you ever on an issue when the president has said innumerable things that um, probably could yeah, made you so mad. Imagine, Why, what yeah, is it imagine, about this? Imagine, well, imagine you had a boss, Kate, that drove you crazy a lot of the time but you poured your heart and soul into a job, and somehow, some way, you, you were in a, the type of profession where you failed. You didn't win. And the next day, even that boss who bothered you, who you disagreed with, but you bit your tongue, instead of that boss saying, you know what, I know we didn't always see eye to eye. Thank you for your service, Kate. I hope you move on to uh, bigger and better things. Instead, that boss says, Kate, you're a loser. I don't really care whether you won or lost, no big deal. It's like, to your point, dancing on somebody's grave. It's highly inappropriate and it's deeply offensive. And every single one of those members took tough votes in order to advance a center-right agenda because they believed in it, but they took a lot of heat for it. And the president should be thanking them for putting up the tough votes and advancing an agenda, which I believe we are better off economically because of a lot of the policies that have been implemented. And he didn't take that opportunity to do that. Instead, he decided to, um, to say negative things about him. And I just, I just think it's so entirely wrong. It's a would failure you, of leadership. Would you have written the same thing you did? Would you have said what you just said to me tonight? Would you have been comfortable doing that if you weren't retiring? Uh, in this case, yeah. Because those are my friends. Uh, those are people who I lived and worked with every single day. Uh, anyone who's watching the program is in a work environment. And if you're in a very tough, intense work environment, and when you serve in Congress, I promise you, it gets pretty intense. It gets pretty tough. People say things about you that aren't nice. That's all fine. That's all part of the business. But you, you develop a certain respect for the people that you work with. And when you see them lose, it's tough enough. But when you see them lose because of the president, and the president not only doesn't acknowledge that, instead he says if they would have just embraced him, they would have won, which is a total joke. Nobody believes that. Uh, but then to insult them and mock them on their way out, 
it's just the height of of pettiness. It's can just I ask you, it's not can excusable. I, can I ask it's, you real quick? You're retiring, and the party, I mean, the people who lost, or as you're saying, center right, uh, m much of them. Is there? Are you finding that there? Is there still a place for you in the Republican Party? Are you questioning that now? Well, I mean, philosophically, uh, I am a Republican um, for a number of different issues, and that's not uh, to speak pejoratively about those who philosophically are Democrats. We're a two-party system. Ultimately, you're trying to find compromise. Um, but to your point about where we are as a party right now, yeah. um, it is very difficult in a suburban environment uh, in this election cycle uh, to have won. Uh, and I think there are a lot of voters out there that are making decisions not based on policy right now, but based on the personality of the president. And that's not working to the Republican advantage in competitive seats. Oh. Congressman, thank you for coming in. We've had many a conversation. None so much like this. I appreciate your candor. Thank you.